was not so long ago that DNA replication was a complete mystery. If it's still a bit of a mystery to you, don't worry. When I was a freshman, I didn't completely understand DNA replication either. All you really or all you need to know for the sake of this presentation is that um, DNA replication is the uh, production of two replicas from one parent stem, and that it's the basic basic basis for biological inheritance. So although it is common knowledge today, to, or to biologists today, there were three different hypotheses in, in the 1950s, the conservative, the semi-conservative, and the dispersive models. The scientists who proposed the, these hypotheses, however, did not have evidence to back them up. And so they were just merely speculation. The conservative model shows that the parent, the parent helix doesn't unwind and that it would somehow remain entirely intact. And that the daughter, the new daughter strand would be made of completely new nucleotides and just would be a completely, entirely new DNA strand. The dispersive uh, model states that the strand is copied in short segments and that there's no unwinding just fragmenting. And so each DNA strand would have a bit of the parent and a bit of uh, new nucleotide sequences within it. The semi-conservative shows that each new, each new DNA strand consists of one of the original parent strands and then one newly synthesized strand. And this was the most commonly thought true hypothesis of before uh, any testing was done. And here's what they'll look like. And uh, you should probably write them down since I'll refer to them quite a bit. Um, two scientists, Messelson and Stahl, began researching the three hypotheses of three accepted hypotheses of DNA replication that I just mentioned. Uh, their research goal was to figure out which of these hypotheses were correct. They accepted that one of these were correct and that it wasn't an outside hypothesis, but they needed to design an experiment to determine which of these was true. The results may not shock you. Uh, they began research and to design this experiment, and it took several years, but after these years of research, uh, they designed the most beautiful experiment in biology. 1952, two scientists discovered that DNA is the genetic material of cells. Shortly after that, two, other sci two more scientists discovered that replication must occur in the egg. People wanted to know how replication works, and since it's the fundamental knowing of how DNA itself works. And DNA is the building block to life, and so it's, this is pretty important to us. After, the years, after these years of research, the experiment they designed started by growing two batches of E. coli. Each batch was put in a different medium containing different nitrogen isotopes, nitrogen 14 and 15. The DNA in the heavy isotope was then added to the light medium. The resulting replicate strands were then broken apart by heat. Each of these resulting strands, both from the DNA, in the heavy DNA in the light medium, and the resulting strands broken apart, were uh, put in a density centrifuge. Why? Well, the E. coli were added through the different nitrogen isotopes because nitrogen is a major constituent of DNA which means that it'll make up a lot of the, ma the DNA's mass. And so the nitrogen-14, the DNA and nitrogen-14 uh, isotopes will have a lighter, will be lighter than the DNA in nitrogen-15. The density centrifuge was used in order to read the densities of each of the, was, or, in, uh, was used in order to read the densities and the sequences, which was important in uh, 
these next two, the heavier uh, DNA was added to a lighter medium in order to rule out each hypothesis one by one. And so the resulting strand, and also the resulting strand, was heated and broken apart in order to decide which of the last two hypotheses were correct. The results showed that the uh, strand resulting from the heavy DNA uh, in the light medium was that it had a density in between that of pure, uh, pure mentioned in 15 and 14 uh, DNA, which rules out the possibility of the conservative model, as you can see, because in the conservative model, there would be two distinct densities, but since it's in the middle, it means that the DNA strands are synthesized with both uh, parent and newly synthesized uh, nucleotide sequences. And so that brought us to believe that either the semi-conservative or the dispersive models were correct. In order to distinguish between these two, uh, the strand was then heated and detached from the double helix. And then the, the uh, strands were then measured in the density center. This showed that there were two distinct densities uh, identical to that of the uh, DNA in the heavy and of the light, iso light isotopes. This, this rules out the dispersive model, as you can see, in that if we detach these two strands, there would, only be, there would still only be one density since it's a mishmash of newly and um, parent strands in one, and so that uh, s the semi-conservative model shows that if they're split apart, there will be two distinct densities, which we saw. This means that the semi-conservative model is the accepted model of DNA replication. Since there are only three accepted hypotheses for the uh, process of DNA replication, ruling them out one by one seemed to be the most proficient way of discovering the truth. These results, however, could have been stronger if more hypotheses were accepted by Stahl and Nesselson, but they haven't been argued against that much, so it worked out. Um, there have been more studies done after this experiment on how DNA replication can be different in different cells, and so uh, studies are still going on about how DNA replication actually occurs. So, they hypothesized that they hypothesized that one of these accepted. They accepted that one of these hypotheses were correct, and their experiment showed that it was directed towards ruling them out one by one. The results of that showed that. The heavy DNA added to the light isotope shows one density, uh, one density, and that when they're split apart, it shows two distinct densities. Uh, this tells us that the semi-conservative model is the correct model used, um, the most correct model of these three. Their main research goal was to. Uh, see how DNA replication really occurs. And by ruling out the other two and the other two accepted hypotheses, they satisfied their goal. There are a few arguments against it, and since then there has been no evidence against their uh, conclusion. 